Kelsey Ann, put your tits away. We're trying to work. No, I am working. You're working with your tits out? <laughs> I'm wearing a bathing suit top. I'm going to wear a bathing suit top every day we record, okay? Only fitting. Because what's this podcast? Florida Woman Pod. That's right. Cast. Introduce our asses. <laughs> I'm Kelsey Ann. I am a Florida woman. And you're listening to the Florida Woman Podcast, which you know because you clicked on it. And this is my fiance, Nathan. Fiance. Is that supposed to be like a crowd reaction? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is recorded in front of a live a studio live audience. audience. Aww. I'm the fiance. My name's Nathan. I'm from the Midwest. Okay. I'm not from Florida. Mr. I'm an Midwest. outsider. Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm from, I grew up in Kansas City, mm-hmm. in the ice cold wasteland of Kansas City in, Chi- in Chicago. Did you know that Florida is actually the flattest state in the union? It's fucking Sorry, bullshit. Kansas. It's a lie. It's huh? a lie. Put your tits away and stop lying to me. <laughs> this is how it's going to go. Um, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of our segments. Okay. But I do want to preface this by saying that this is a Florida podcast. I'm going to run down so- your segments. <laughs> So please don't expect perfection, okay? I I think Florida is the state of over-promising and under-delivering, and I'd like to reverse that here while I can. I'd like to under-promise and over-deliver, okay? Mm-hmm. So we are going to do Florida woman versus Florida man. Florida folks going head-to-head in a daily headline battle. We'll read the Florida woman and Florida man crime headlines for the day and vote on a winner. Next, I'm going to introduce a concept, a very mysterious concept, called the Florida Connection. Then we're going to dive into our Florida-based topic of the week. This week's is the Florida Hypothesis, our humble theories on why Florida is constantly popping off. Then we're going to do whack facts and findings. Then we're going to end the show every week with who won, Florida man or Florida woman. Mm -hmm. And throughout this season, we are going to be deep diving into such Florida topics as the Villages, the world's largest retirement community where everyone has STDs. We're going to do some dark Disney, some some stuff about deaths in the parks and other conspiracies. We're going to go over Skunk Ape and we're going to go, go over Gibsonton, <laughs> the country's only town built by and for circus freak show performers and more. A whole hell of a lot more. The thing about Florida is it never stops it never producing stops being Florida. content. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to get into in this podcast. What the fuck is going on in Florida? Why is it such a goddamn weird place? And we're doing that from an insider. That's me. And an outsider perspective. That's you. And we're going to be tackling this problem. Oh, yeah. So welcome. To the Florida Woman Podcast. What is the most uh, Florida thing about you? The most Florida thing about me? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the most Florida thing about me is that I can't grow a beard. Like my facial hair is like super scraggly and I constantly have like weird like pock marks and stuff (laughs) on my face. You have, yeah, you have sensitive membranes. Listen, I, I want to clarify for all of the listeners that we love the state of Florida. And every time we make fun of it or criticize it, it is with a deep and abiding love for the state. Absolutely. Um, it's Kelsey Ann's natural habitat. It is indeed. And it's a place that I've grown to really love and appreciate. But y'all are fucked up down there a little bit. <laughs> And so the, I think the most Florida thing about me, especially my appearance, is that like my, my pores are wide <laughs> open and my f- hair grows in every which fucking direction. You've got a flake on, yeah. in the corner of your mouth that's Okay, okay. Let me clarify. Let me clarify the flake. Unexplainable. Right? Okay, okay. I have herpes simplex one. Simplex uh-huh. one, not simplex two. And what that does is it causes a little cornflake to grow in the corner of my mouth every mm-hmm. once in a while. I'm an ugly beast, by the way. <laughs> I'm a disgusting pig. Uh, so picture a pig's face every time you hear my voice while you're listening to this. Uh. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's herpes simplex one. It's a cold sore, and it happens when I get stressed out, okay? And I've had it for the past year and a half. 
All right. Okay. Now you can go. <laughs> I want to know what the least Florida thing about you is. The least well. Florida thing about mm -hmm. me? Um, I have lily white pasty fucking skin. We're back to skin. We're back to skin. <laughs> it's always back to skin. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, you hate a man in a flip-flop. Oh, like I do. Yeah, like, a man, a man wearing flip flops. Um, I assume he's probably gonna mug me. <laughs> if you're if you're a grown man and you're wearing flip flops and you're outside of like a like a shower, mm -hmm. you know, or I, I, you know what? There's like no a appropriate. Room. Yeah, there's no yeah. appropriate time to be wearing flip flops as a man. As a as a grown adult man. Yeah. Um, Put your feet away. Yeah, no, I don't want to see your feet. Right. Well, not even, I don't want to see your feet because like normal sandals don't even really bother me, mm. but just flip flops, okay. especially like if they've got like it's branding the thong -like on them. It's the thong-like appearance? No, it's not the thong-like appearance. It's just the, the flipping, the flopping. The flipping and flopping. It's not attached okay. to your foot. All right. I, I it, makes, it sounds like you're slapping meat as you're walking down. It's fucking ridiculous. They're ridiculous shoes. All right. Go I <laughs> would like to tell everyone what the most Florida thing about me is. Go ahead. I'd say that the the most Florida thing about me is the amount of clothing that I wear, which That's is to true. say Minimal. very few. Yeah. yeah. Um, I I try to to wear as few clothing items per day as possible, and you know <laughs> I I really learned that that was not normal. Uh, when I went to boarding school and then like later on it went to where? college, California, but, yeah. but it snowed and stuff. Yeah. Um, that people were like, um, can you put clothes on? And I was like, what are clothes? Like I, people wear like bikini tops as like shirts, you know? In Florida. Yeah. Yeah. I, you, they um... were like, what's up with this? What? What? What's up with this big old slut who can't put any fucking clothes on on a daily basis? Which would be cool. I hope they thought that about me. But it's just, I just didn't understand that not everywhere was like clothing optional. And so I'd also like to say that I think the least Florida thing about me is that I didn't learn to swim until three years ago. Which is insane because you grew up less than a mile from the ocean yeah. your entire childhood. Yeah. Well, let me clarify. I know how to like swim. Like I know how to like move through the water, keep my head above water, kind of, you know, get from place to place in the ocean. So I was a lifeguard, and you know what we call that? Mm -mm. An active drowning victim. Oh, my God. <laughs> my mom used to, like, drop me off to friends' houses if we were going to the beach and tell their moms, she's not a strong swimmer. <laughs> I don't but know that's how not I true that. anymore. I know. You know how to swim. I know. You're a good swimmer. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Do you want to go to Florida man and Florida woman of the day? Yeah. 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 Is it absurdity? Is it um, derelictness? If that's a word. If yeah, it's not, I'm yeah. from Florida, so we've covered De that. Derelictitude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is it uh, the criminality itself? Well, what is I, it? I, I think is it that funny? These are, is it like yeah, uh, which one's yeah. funnier? I think these are all these are all, all criteria. Okay, they all go and into I the pod. I think that um, basically it's just when we get to the end of the pod, what's feeling the most Florida? Okay. To us? All right, that yeah. works. Yeah. So I'm reading an article from Orlando Weekly by Colin Wolf. Okay. And on October 9th, 2015, mm -hmm. a Florida woman glued her eyes shut after mistaking super glue for eye drops. <laughs> Latana resident Fuck. Catherine Gatos' left eye is completely glued shut because of an extremely <laughs> unfortunate mix-up with eye drops and super glue. Gatos, a mother of two, told WPBF a neighbor was using a leaf blower when a piece of debris flew into her eye. Quote, something blew into my eye. I screamed for someone else to get eye drops out of my purse, and they brought me super glue and poured it in my eye, says Gatos. <laughs> I closed my eye and screamed and called 911. How did she call 911 if her eye was well, She shut? had the other eye. I feel like I would panic and think I was completely blind in both You'd be eyes. Hyper <laughs> yeah. Um, according to WPBF, Gatos was scheduled to have a doctor operate on her eye, but 
But the treatment was postponed because she couldn't pay for it. Quote, he was talking oh about doing surgery God. to try to save my eye, but now I don't know what to do. I don't have a job, no insurance, or any money. End quote. Holy shit. So my Florida man is from the Tuscaloosa News. Mm -hmm. On October 9th, 2016, in West Palm Beach, a man, Joshua James, 24 years old, was arrested. 20 what? 24. <laughs> okay. Years old, was arrested and charged with assault with a deadly weapon without intent to kill after he threw a live alligator through a drive through window uh. in an attempt to attack the person who was serving him food. Why did he want to attack? Well, him? evidently he was upset with his order. So wait, let me let me get this straight. Uh-huh. So he wasn't thro when you first said that I thought he was throwing the gator through the window as payment for items. <laughs> But you're saying he paid yeah. for the items. Well, okay, so let he me He got let me the ask items, you. was unsatisfied, Florida. and then grabbed the gator from maybe the back seat and flung it through the window. Well, so, okay, what it says here is that he drove his pickup truck to the window at about 1.20 a.m. Uh-oh. Um, yeah, that's a bad sign. After an employee sign. handed James his drink, okay. he threw an alligator through the window and drove away. So it was payment. It does sound like it does he was, sound paying like with he an was alligator. Yeah. Okay, so you're from Florida. Yeah, alligators like, are legal tender down there. Absolutely, right? yeah. Yeah. How we, much, we don't like to advertise how many US that really. How much is an alligator worth? Well, give or take size of alligator. Okay, um, so size. He was getting one fountain drink from a fast food restaurant. Uh, oh, yeah, that's a that's a toddler gator. <laughs> I'd I'd say. <laughs> it doesn't a, need to a be a hatched, big daddy. Recently hatched yeah. alligator. Yeah. Mhm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. cool. Yeah. Wow. Kelsey in. What? What's the Florida connection? I'm so glad you asked. Um, well, the Florida connection is actually a 1975 motion picture starring blonde bombshell June Wilkinson, who turns out had a 43, 22, 37 body measurement at 5'6". I'm I just Googling want, her I right now. just needed to... Oh Say that. my god. Yeah, it's insane. Her body was crazy. Oh my god. This yeah. woman is And that's all natural, fucking... baby. We didn't have no BBLs oh, or anything. Oh. She's slim thick. Girl. Yeah. She, oh, she is fine as hell. Mhm. Mm yeah, that's right. She kind of so, looks like you, babe. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah. so her and actor Dan Pastorini, who was actually drafted by the New York Mets as a shortstop, which what? I know proves the New York Florida exchange pipeline that I'm always talking okay, about. Okay, okay, we have a lot of Florida. Theories. I know, I know. We I got know. the Florida connection. We'll tease them all. I'm doing the Florida connection right now. Okay, we also have the Florida New York pipeline. Mm -hmm. um, we also have uh, the Florida jail pipeline. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Um, so, so okay, so uh, June Wilkinson and Dan Pastorini. Uh, so it's about him being the key man in a widespread network of dope peddlers discovering the hazards of being caught between the law and the underworld. But that's not the Florida connection that I want to talk about today. So it's my working theory that in every major national breaking news story, in every national debacle, there is a Florida connection let that sink in you're gonna start to see it everywhere now 9-11 george bush was reading a book about goats to school children at sarasota's booker elementary uh the three hijackers got their pilot's licenses in venice florida okay did you hear that yeah 9-11 happened because of florida yep and their rich saudi Backers, benefactors, had a home in Nokomis that they fled, leaving jewelry and valuables two weeks to the day before September 11th. Yeah. Yeah, it's a Florida connection. The Gabby Petito case, everyone's freaking out about. Yeah, they moved from New York, Long Island. See, New York to Florida. Yeah. To Northport, Florida. That's where Brian's parents lived and, mm -hmm. you know, where Brian was last seen, right? They lived in Florida. It just goes on and on. Je Jeffrey Epstein's nonsense, Florida. That was Florida? I thought that was Little St. James Island. Well, they would go to that island, but he lived in Palm Beach. Girls would come over to Palm Beach to his mansion in 
massage his egg-shaped penis. <laughs> it's true. Tiger King, Joe uh, Exotic started collecting mm-hmm. pets, exotic animals, when he was living probably his big gay Miami life in, in Miami. Mm-hmm. Also, Carol Baskin lives in Florida, in the Tampa Bay area. That's right. She has that big cat rescue thing. That's in Florida. Just The list goes on and on. I'm just planting the seed now. And this is my challenge to you. When you hear a breaking news story, you look for the Florida connection. And you email me personally if you find one. That's right. Because you will. Nathan, would you like to do the whack facts and findings? Okay, whack facts and findings. Today's whack fact, whack Florida fact and finding is that the first automatic teller machine was installed in Miami. And get the fuck this fact. Get the fuck it. Okay? Take your brain and uh-huh. absorb it. Okay. It was designed for rollerbladers. ATMs were designed for people on rollerblades. Because there were so many... They were designed for gay men on rollerblades. <laughs> Who didn't have time? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Who didn't have time to stop in Mm -hmm. and talk to a teller? Or could they not go in because of their rollerblades? They couldn't rollerblade into the bank. Or like cool hot eighties people Uh on rollerblades who didn't have enough clothing Uh or pockets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, bring a checkbook or whatever. That makes total sense. Yeah. So now a, 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 a machine that's in every bodega. Yeah. Every uh, every corner store has got an ATM inside of it, yeah. defeating the fucking purpose. <laughs> Definitely, they're for rollerbladers. They're for active, sexy, cut, slick, oily people. Yeah, wearing tropical colors. Wearing and tropical if I colors. See that's right. Anybody fucking else using an ATM from now on? It's... I'm gonna have something to say about it. This is the question right here. Why is Florida? Why is Florida so absurd? Why does it produce a staggering amount of fuckery? What makes it so chaotic? Yeah, where is that chaotic energy coming from? What are the factors that go into it? And I also think that, you know, why we're so fascinated right now in culture with Florida, not, I mean, yeah, the headlines are funny and there's always something fucking wacky happening down there. And it's like, truth is stranger than fiction. Like you can't write this shit. You you can't make this up, you know? But I think that it's not just Florida itself that is so fascinating to people. I think it's that America is the world's Florida. And Florida is America's Florida. Florida. Got it. So explain that. I think that we're able to look at Florida as something outside of ourselves, right? The people that don't live there. They're able to look at Florida as this thing that is totally separate from them and laugh at it. But I think that the reason that it has such staying power and the reason that the fascination is deeper than just a quick laugh is because there is Florida inside all of us. But what I mean by that is like what Florida does, America will do next. Like we're looking at Florida and we're actually recognizing a piece of ourselves in Florida in terms of the way that the rest of the world looks at us, right? Like the way that the rest of the world looks at America is how America looks at Florida. And I think that's why we're so fascinated by it. Okay, so I have a few ideas about why Florida is Florida, man. Why Florida is as weird as it is. Okay, Mm -hmm. this one's pretty simple. Population. So... Florida is the third largest state in the country. There are 20 million people living there. There's 100 million tourists coming every year. And most of them are crammed into like a 35 mile wide strip, you know, along each coast or in Orlando. So I think that a lot of the wackiness that comes from Florida is as simple as it has a really big population. So it has a lot of different types of people living there, a lot of natives and a lot of tourists, and they put together clash, right? 
So there's so many different people from all over the world of different backgrounds bumping into each other. Machetes are going to come out, you know. <laughs> so and and this population boom happened really fast. This is the other thing. It happened within a generation and a half. Like Florida used to be one of the least populous states forever and ever and ever and ever until extremely recently. So it's this boom that Florida has not been able to keep up with. And I think it, it, I think it contributes to the sort of manic energy in the state. It's just, it can't keep up with the demands that people put on Florida. Right. Um, so yeah, like pre-World War II, it was the second least populous state in the country. So with well, this... Well, because you can't like build anything there. Right. right? It's, it's like I mean, sandy soil or swamps. Essentially. Yeah. yeah. And like the the water table. Like if you dig like... I don't know if that's called a water table. It's called no, it something is. like yeah, that. Yeah. If you dig like two inches into Florida soil, like you'll hit water. <laughs> yeah, and like water, that's it. Right, exactly. Um, so I just think that this growth is massive and rapid and like mm-hmm. out of control. Mm-hmm. And it also sort of explains the no one is from Florida adage. It just it just always seems like no one's from Florida. Yeah. Like how many people do you know besides me that are from Florida? And you probably only know them because I point them out all the time okay there you go like I just feel like it's not a place that you're usually from you usually move there Mm -hmm. from a colder state and you're there you just don't meet many native Floridians I think like Gen X you know there starts to be a little bit of people who are like from Florida millennials they start to be from Florida Gen Z fine but like boomers and above it is highly statistically unlikely that you are from Florida. But so isn't that the majority of people who live there though? What are you saying? I was saying the majority of people who live in Florida are boomers and yeah. above. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's one of the other things that makes Florida f- so weird is that like no one's from Florida. It's like you just said, like the majority of the population is boomers and above and they're not from there. And yeah. I think that... They're from Michigan. And they're from yes. New York, and they're from Illinois, and they're from Wisconsin, and, and Ohio, from, and yeah. wherever. And I think it, it it like contributes to this lack of ownership of the state, and like this sense that it's expendable and that it's temporary, and that it's like not a real place that real people are from. And I think it allows those types of people that aren't from there to treat it like shit and i think that sort of adds to the the mayhem as well you know going off of that florida i've i heard this somewhere i did not make this up florida is america's casablanca like people come from all over to escape something else right Mm -hmm. it's the land of second chances if you screwed up somewhere else you can come to florida and try it again or just burn out or whatever. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. But that it Do like... Do a shitload of crack and wind up like on the police report. Like, yeah. So I think that's the other thing the is like... That's the that no one's from Florida. Like fast food windows. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And the population ties both of those things into the di- diagnosis of why Florida is so fucking wacky. Mm-hmm. Because the not only is there a lot of tourism, it's a huge population from... People from all over. No one's really from there. But it's people from all over that are escaping where they're from for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's for nefarious reasons. I mean, I literally grew up with my dad um, saying that my dad literally used to tell me, like as a very young child, like everyone in Florida is running from something else. Like everyone in Florida is here because they're escaping something else, which is dark, but true. What was he running from? A lot of things. Two ex-wives. One of whom might have been in the mafia. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Interesting. Um, so the other thing is like, there's there's a lack true of... True story. True story. A lack of groundedness um in florida and i think this comes from the fact that there's no industry i mean truly there's like no real native industry in florida 
there's real estate, there's money laundering, there's drugs, there's political corruption, there's um, some professional boxers here and there, I find. <laughs> um, there's some baseball players that come out of Florida, but like, it doesn't make anything. Like orange juice, I guess. But like, if you really look at it, it doesn't have a sort of infrastructure to support jobs. Nothing's made there. Well, like we just said, you can't build on the ground. It's yeah. porous. So so, so it's already an it. insanely temporary way of mm-hmm. life. Besides what? Orange juice? I think yeah. there's cattle grazing. There is, but, but like, like... But they're not uh, slaughtered in Florida. So right, it's right. just like a tax thing where yeah. uh, people who own large swaths of land in the middle of the state uh, pay get to pay less taxes if they have cattle on their land. <laughs> so they have other people's cattle on their land and then when it's time for them to get slaughtered, they ship them to Kansas right. or wherever. Right. Um, so again, that's not industry. That's just tax evasion. Mm-hmm. I think the other thing is that like there's an incredible amount of diversity. This ties back to the population thing. Um, you know, you got your old people, obviously, both mm-hmm. Jew and Gentile. Mm-hmm. Okay. You've got, you've got immigrants from all over, mm-hmm. um, from Puerto Rico, from Cuba, from Haiti, from freaking South all America, over, yeah, from Russia, the sort Europe. Of, there's a shitload of Italians that yes, live where your parents live. Yes, yeah. there's a lot of like northern Italians in um and, like, Tarpon Sarasota, Springs, Tarpon right? Springs. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are uh, you know, and then there's sort of the rednecks, mm-hmm. right? We're speaking mm-hmm. in generalizations here, okay? Yeah. But like, there's the the people that are southern, mm-hmm. just like southern white folk. There's the tourists I mentioned. What's There's... the name for those people, by the way? I don't know. Southern white folk in Florida? Crackers? Florida cracker. Oh, yeah. Florida crackers. The, uh, the racist term that Kelsey Ann uses. <laughs> that I to use? Denigrate. <laughs> God. Denigrate my pale and pasty brethren. Mm hmm. Who suffer from sunburns every day. Every day. As a suffer. result of their crippling whiteness. Yeah. In the northern parts of Florida. That's true. Yeah. So I'd like you to speak with more respect about that group of people. Okay. I will for in the future. Yeah, you have my you. word. Yeah. Thank you very um, much. Yeah. There are uh, like the sort of nouveau riche from the rest of the country yeah. moving there, you know. Where? Um, mostly the southern east coast of Florida. Mostly mm-hmm. like the Miami-Dade area. Nice. Um, but Orlando as well. Buying Orlando cool has a lot of Brazilians cars too. And shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hot Brazilians. Maybe. Yeah. Well, hey, that's another episode, actually. Uh, yeah. Florida does more Brazilian butt lifts than any other state or country in the world. A Brazilian butt lift, by the way, is a fucking plastic surgery operation that you get to make your your ass more perky. And bigger. And bigger. Yeah. And they take and fat from, from your waist and back to put it into your butt and hips. So Florida's a melting it's, pot. It's a melting pot. It's yeah. a mess. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you also have the very religious there. Like There's what? like not as many laws about like what you can practice. There's like a shit ton of Amish people. Uh-huh. Where your live, right? Yep. Yep. It, it's called Pinecraft. It's a Amish neighborhood <laughs> in Sar- like near Sarasota yeah. where um, Amish people winter like anyone else. They come down on a bus. Don't let... Don't... Don't let them get <laughs> away with the, that loophole. They're all on the bus. Okay? It's a pedal bus. They're all pedaling That's the bus. That's not true. On the highway. <laughs> but yeah. I'm, I'm wondering what the ethics are of that because it is a bus and I I'm just want to know like how they get around it. wooden bus with like a hundred horses. <laughs> no, it's a real bus with air conditioning. Yeah. Right. Anyway, it's one of those states that is more populated by people who come from elsewhere than natives mm. and it includes so many different types of people from different places Um, that, you know, people clash. It's not a homogeneous state. It's not a state that has, you know, one or two types of people. I don't know. Mm -mm. It it, it really is just this like insane. You said melting pot already. Mosaic. If you're usually, if you're from the Midwest, you move to the West coast of Florida and it's then big. generally people from the East Coast, your Bostonites, your mm-hmm. New Yorkers, your New Jerseyans, your peoples. They moved to Rat they, Mouth, right? Uh-huh, Boca Raton, yep. Mm-hmm. They, moved, they tend to move to the East Coast of Florida. So 
Florida is made up of such disparate parts that it, it's not only because not a lot of people are from there, but it's also because the people that are from there also have very little in common. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is like what's normal in the in the cattle country of like northern or, or north central Florida is like wildly unacceptable in Miami. And like what is what is common in like Miami Beach is like, which is, you know, they're up to their own antics. It's not at all like the antics of the people that live on the floor of Amashore, you know? So right. it's just this unintegrated sort of mismatched of wildly different peoples and cities and cultures and lifestyles. And they have no shared mythology. And none of it is acceptable in the, the rest of the, the world. Yeah. Yeah. The not at all. Yeah. But like this, this idea We've sort of touched on the temporary nature because, like, it's going to be destroyed soon in the climate <laughs> apocalypse. Well, yeah, okay. But also so because it's, it's always felt temporary. Yeah. It's temporary, first of all, because the uh, the polar ice caps are going to melt and it's going to be underwater. It's already almost underwater. Yeah. So if the water level rises another foot, the whole fucking state's going to be underwater. Um, so, so, okay. So Florida's going to sink into the ocean um, pretty soon if nothing is done. Yeah, but it's also so. Not place, only do people about, no, not think have about a past. Why people move to Florida in the first place. They go there because they're almost dead. Yeah, they're gonna. So die. it doesn't matter. It's all. It's like it's already it's on fire. Exactly. It's like the perfect place to go when That's you're why about you can to die. Move actually. down to the villages. The villages yeah. is a completely unsustainable thing. Yeah, it's this giant like retirement community in the middle of Florida that like uses more water and like resources and like sucks up land and like has all these people living in it. It keeps developing and it's like building suburbs that only old people live in. It's a it's a crazy idea. It's, and like all of these houses are going to be empty in a couple of you know, a couple of decades because they're all going to fucking die. But for right now, they keep building and building and building and expanding and expanding and expanding. And that's sort of the spirit of Florida in the first yeah. place. We don't know what's going to happen. Exactly. And like, that's what I'm trying to say about like, People who come here from other states, they don't have a past here. Yeah. So there's no sense of past. That's right. And then there's also no sense of future. Right. Because the future doesn't matter mm -hmm. because either they're going to die or they're already running from their old life. Yeah. Like they're running into a new future, but it's, it's to a place that is like essentially only livable in the present. That's right. Like it has no That's future. Right. So in that sort of way, it's like unlimited possibility. Yes. Florida is unlimited possibility. Yeah. Um, not actually, but in the minds of the people who have created the idea of Florida. And like, I also think like there's a, this idea that like everyone's just passing through. Like the yeah. tourists are obviously just passing through. Yeah. But really like... You know, I have known a lot of retirees in my time. Mm -hmm. They also sort of feel like they're passing through. Totally. Like passing through on their way to heaven or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also just like passing through in terms of like, they kind of do think they're someday going to move back to Grand Rapids or to like Worcester or <laughs> right, right. Cincinnati or whatever. Right. Like they, their hearts aren't here. Like their hearts are uh -huh. in Washtenaw. Washtenaw. <laughs> yeah, know? totally. Yeah. Um, and so like when your heart is not, you not only didn't grow up there, it doesn't feel like a place that's like firm enough to build a future, mm -hmm. but your heart's somewhere else. So like in Cuba or like yeah, in Russia, it's just one of those like Greece transient or, places. Yeah. Like it, it's almost like Florida is a liminal space. But th Well, that's what I was about to say. I have almost never felt m like I was in more in between a more liminal space than when I was in Key West. It is a place that is just a jumble of all kinds of different shit that like I don't belong in. Like, But I, nobody does. And nobody does, exactly. It's built on this like crazy island that's in this weird archipelago that juts off off the lower end of the peninsula of Florida. And it's like connected by this long highway that shouldn't exist. It's got no right to exist. It really does not. Um, and it it all winds up in this weird little place that is like everyone is like in between spaces. Yep. It's like there is no um, anchor. There. No, and it's no such anchor. A strange thing. There's, There's also chickens running around everywhere. Oh yeah. There's like I mean the the okay the feeling of walking on a 
on a uh, street lamp lit sidewalk at like 10 at night. Mm. Um, and there's like an ocean next to you. Like you see, you see the ocean next to you and um, it's dark all around and there's kind of no one around and then just a chicken just runs across your field of vision. There's also a lot of stray cats. Yeah, shit. There's a lot of stray cats. people. I mean, there's just yeah, we're all stray. It's there. a very liminal experience, and it was a very liminal experience to be there. By the way, I once heard a Hemingway, like a, a relative of a Hemingway, talk about how like Key West isn't what it used to be. Like they don't go, they don't even go to Key West anymore. And I was like, ew. Yeah. I just ugh, what a bad attitude. <laughs> No, Florida, like, Florida's never what it used to be. It's never right. anything. It's always changing. It's never been a thing. That's right. That's right. Remember when... Um, and therefore, it's no place for snobs. Oh, my God. Is it not? There is no place for snobbery in Florida. You can't be a fucking snob, snob and live in a wasteland of And appreciate of this humidity. place. Yeah. Yeah. No, you've got to be down to earth. Yeah, that's right. Down... To in one way or another, I mean, <laughs> even if you're like an eccentric billionaire who owns like a castle built on a swamp that's been filled like, in. I think it's just this shared sense that of like your of life like is zoo a joke. Animals running around, yeah, like you've that's got to what it accept is. the absurdity of the human condition yeah. and of the world to be able to live in Florida and like piece it all together. I think this is like a this is a Florida memory of mine. We were mm-hmm. in Key West and we were in a cab on the way to the airport. By the way. We didn't take a cab from the airport to our Airbnb because we hitched rides with locals who were like, yeah, we do this all the time. We're just going to like pull this one car. Crazy. But um, we were taking a cab to the airport and there was this um, Haitian man who was talking to us about how like he loves Trump and how like he loves America and he thinks Trump's amazing and his brother works Mm -hmm. at a Trump casino in New Jersey and he's like he really likes his job and he makes a lot of money so like Trump is awesome basically it was just like this is such a Florida interaction yeah you you couldn't get more Florida than that and I think like that's what people don't get I think it is a microcosm of what people don't get about diversity frankly and Mm. like you know, explain. Uh, oh, I just should I? Um, just because there's like a snobbery, I think, at least especially on the East Coast where we're living now, about like what. Oh yeah. What like Let's immigrants on, do and do not. We think. live in we live in Brooklyn, New York, and we're part of the Brooklyn communist podcast <laughs> scene. Yeah. To be totally clear, <laughs> this is a communist podcast. <laughs> And uh, we dedicate each and every episode to uh, Vladimir Ilyich uh, uh, Ulyanov, otherwise known as Lenin. Well, uh, we just lost all of our Cuban listeners. (laughs) Thanks a lot. No, I'm just fucking kidding. We do live in New York, uh, but this may or may not be a communist podcast. Yeah, you'll have to wait and find out. Yeah, you'll have to wait until we implant that into your brain. So basically what we're saying is like, Florida's too many things, so it's in an identity crisis. So it's like, it's it's not like the deep south, but it is. Mm-hmm. It's not Cuba and Puerto Rico, but like it is. Mm-hmm. It's not the East Coast, but like it is. Mm-hmm. And it's just too many of these things that it's also not. So it's just like in it a permanent yeah. identity crisis. Absolutely. You don't it's feel a place... like a particular type of person when you grow up in Florida. You totally. feel totally anchorless. Yeah, Absolutely. It's a place that the entire economy is based on tourism, and yet there's only like a few places where tourists can even go. go. Yeah. yeah. But right. here, here's a quote. I'm going to mm-hmm. read a quote to you. Go ahead. The state has been built on promises of an eternal present, on blithe and deliberate disregard for the past, on a refusal to give a single naked wit about the future. So this temporariness, I think it also contributes to this like, no one cares to invest in an infrastructure that feels long term. People don't want to pay taxes because they don't want to invest in the schools and the roads or anything else because they don't fucking care because they're only going to be there another five to ten years and they're going to die. What the fuck do they care if it's an actual place with actual things? It's a sinking ship. Let's just fucking party on it. Florida has no 
mythology. Mm -hmm. It has no shared stories. It has no one culture, which is great. It makes it super interesting. It makes it super chaotic and fun. And I also think that it, it's been around just long enough as a state for that to now be creating an issue, for it to be creating a sort of a vacuum, an absence, a whole. People are now from there and going like, wait, what does it mean to be from here? What what are our cultural stories as are like a, a people? I think so. I am. Yeah. And that's, I think Florida Man is the state's new mythology. Which, by the way, we're breaking the mold. Uh, Florida woman is equally fucking interesting <laughs> and crazy. Oh, yeah, baby. Hence the title of this goddamn podcast. <laughs> um, I also think just the heat addles people. Yeah, heat bakes people's brains. It, it makes does. them, like, makes them oh, the, do different shit, act different ways. The murder rate cold. always spikes in the in the summer. Well, yeah, Everywhere. Like, when it gets hot out, people start acting, acting a fool. Yeah. People start acting fucking crazy. And I also think that, like, not only is it super hot and humid and sticky, mm -hmm. but it's advertised as the sunshine state. Florida is the 10th sunniest state. It's Arizona, New Mexico, Nevada, Texas, California, Colorado, Oklahoma, Kansas, Jeez. and Utah are all sunnier than Florida is. Yeah. How fucking crazy is that? So I think that the heat gets people wiling out, mm -hmm. but then Florida has its origins in lies. I think this is another reason why people are crazy in Florida. It's what you just said. It's the false advertising. It's the false promises. Yeah. It's always over-promising. The sunshine state. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty fucking cloudy a lot of the time. <laughs> and I think you move there and you have this unmet and unfulfilled expectation. I think that, you know, you're being sold a dream. You know, you're being sold... You know, either Arizona or Florida, usually for retired people, <laughs> right? right? Like That's the right. desert or the tropics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you pick tropics and you're promised sunshine, paradise, uh -huh. ease of living. Mm -hmm. And instead you get the 10th you're, sunniest you state. Move in, you move into a prefab uh, yeah. house mm -hmm. that's been built f seven miles away from the ocean. If you're lucky. If you're lucky. Um, you do not get ocean views. The you get traffic is terrible. Swamp and highway views. You get one season, mm -hmm. just muggy and muggier. That's right. You don't get the sunshine you promised. You get hurricanes. You get extreme weather. You get weird bugs. Yeah. And you, you get... This was one thing that fucking bugs me out about Florida. Every time we go there... Okay, so I'm from the Midwest. If there's a body of water... You can like stick your toes in it. You can like go for a swim in a pond. You know what I mean? Not fucking so in Florida. No. There are alligators. Kelsey Ann told me this. The first time we went to Florida together, she was like, listen, there's alligators in every body of fresh water mm -hmm. in this state. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. And I'm like, you're kidding me. Um, and she was like, no, no, no. Check this out. She shows me on her phone. This was the week that there was a like an eight year old boy mm. who got eaten. Uh, oh, I think he was by like a baby, alligator. but yeah, got baby eat. even even better. Well, t tastier. They <laughs> even prefer. Tastier. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like a little snack. He was basically like a little chicken nugget, and he was at Disney World, and he wandered into a large body of water, mm -hmm. and he got fucking snapped up by an alligator. They were from Alaska. They were from yeah. <laughs> the last thing they were Jesus expecting. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Yeah. Oof. But that's what I'm saying. Like. There's this unexpected nature to Florida. There's always something that you're lurking not Lurking around the corner. Something lurking around Underneath. the corner. Underneath. But that's part of what makes it amazing. Is like there's, there's, there's these elements that you cannot expect. Yeah. Elements of danger, unpredictability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I also think like the unchanging seasons uh, gets under people's skin without them realizing. Like I think that this sort of never ending summer that the it just stays the same there's never any change every day's the same like i think that monotony really messes with people's brains there's no like way to delineate your year yeah totally christmas in florida is very strange too by the way yeah 
I don't, I still don't understand Christmas. My mom grew up a Jehovah's Witness. So like I, she doesn't understand Christmas for a different reason. Because they don't have holidays. They can't celebrate holidays. Yeah. Yeah. So she didn't grow up celebrating holidays. So she like kind of freaked out and got really anxious every holiday because she tried to like raise me with normal holidays but like she couldn't figure out how to do it she's like really bad at it it's really funny but also it's never gonna feel like christmas because it's florida it's never gonna feel so i just don't understand christmas i don't like it it don't i don't think it's a very fun holiday (laughs) sorry fucking humbug true Um, I, yeah, I, on the other hand, coming from a place that has seasons, seasonality. I'm a seasonality slut. I'm a fucking pumpkin hoe uh, in a Christmas tree bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Big fat Christmas tree clit. That's All what right. I got. Before you say something even stranger, it's actually been scientifically proven that there is a range of mental and physical health issues that arise when people live above... 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's this paper. We can we can link it in the show notes based on 13 years of Australian data, but I think it applies. Mm, um, Australia, another... T- it's sort of sort Florida-esque, Florida-esque yeah, definitely. country. Um, quote, observed a positive association between ambient temperature and hospital admissions for mental and behavioral disorders. So... I think all of so the habitat and the te- and the temperature we've discussed, but let me go back to this sort of unfulfilled promise. So this false advertising is not it's not a flaw in the system. It's deliberate. It's been all along the shifty, lying, scam artist, you know, libertarian narrative at Florida's core. From the conquistadors who trudged through the swamps to the Ponzi schemes of Gulf American to the real estate companies that sent flocks of salesmen to the Midwest and to the Northeast, which is also why groups from those areas tend to come to Florida. In the late 50s to lure suckers into buying worthless plots of land in swamps to Walt Disney himself, a huckster, um, who created this, you know, capitalist micro state he, um, he, in, he created a fake america yeah in the heart of florida right yeah the heart of florida mainland is the heart of america what's it called it's called main street usa main street it's USA, supposed to be baby. like missouri it he is. built it in florida it's a lie it's a that's, lie goes back to the villages that's also like a uh every corner usa like it's got a main street yeah, feel and exactly. it's like yeah it, so it looks like a 1950s downtown in in Pennsylvania. And he also built a lie about the future. He built Epcot and yes. he built like Tomorrowland and yeah. I I think he's a Florida man. Like yeah, through and through. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. This way of advertising Florida to people and like all the Ponzi schemes that have mm-hmm. come out of Florida and mm-hmm. like these these just like these hucksters that are uh, selling plots of land that are completely used to list to people who have never even heard of Florida. It's a sunny place for shady people. Mm. Is that right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, sunny place for shady people. So I just think that like this, the way Florida has been sold to people, it's always been sold to people that way mm-hmm. as you know a beautiful paradise. And then they and get then you here, go there and it's highways. And they're so and swamps. upset. Yeah. 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 And now this is going to be like a slightly darker uh, vein here, but Ooh. I think it's. <laughs> get into my slightly darker vein. Ew. Oh. Go ahead. Um, I think that some of the craziness of Florida and why it is the way it is also is about poor health care. Mm-hmm. And poor mental health care. So it ranks 48th out of 50 states in mental health funding. <gasps> really? <Sure. laughs> yeah. You're kidding. Yeah. Wow. And I think that the, you know, there's no Medicaid, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, there there maybe is, but like not like it is in other states. There's like right. an insanely small and feeble safety net for people in Florida. Mm-hmm. And um, I... I was doing some research on sort of the stats here and I got this quote um, off of like a Reddit or whatever. So Mm -hmm. it's anonymous, but someone said, I live here in Pinellas County and I believe it's a combination of extreme poverty from low paying jobs 
heat and no access to mental health care, unaffordable health insurance, and very hard to qualify for Medicaid. You get desperate, depressed, angry, and eventually just don't care about anything. That really sums and it up. Throw throw the thriving methamphetamine um, connoisseur community. Yes. So it also, I don't know what's up with the number 48, but it also ranks 48th in education mm-hmm. um, behind Georgia and Alabama. Thank God for Georgia and Alabama. Our education system is shit. Our mental health care is shit. Our health care is shit. I'm, Our, I'm it ranks fifth movie, in the country for instead, income inequality. You remember the movie The Number 23 starring Jim Carrey? Yes. I'm imagining the movie The Number 48 and it stars Jeb Bush. <laughs> and he just can't stop seeing 48 everywhere. Oh, is this a, a movie about mental health? <laughs> That's exactly what it is. It's a documentary about mental health I in love Florida. That. Yeah, I called love The that. Number 48. So Florida also ranks fifth in the country for income inequality, which shouldn't surprise you again. When fifth it... from the top? Of yes, income fifth from the top of You're income inequality. Me. So the state with people with private tiger zoos. <laughs> exactly. And also like the 48th lowest uh, health coverage and mental health coverage in yeah. the nation is fifth in income inequality? You're kidding me. <laughs> so then the, goodness. the last thing. Where does all the wealth go? <laughs> Where does it all go? Where does it go? Um, the last thing that I think makes Florida, Florida, when you're trying to figure out why it's so crazy mm-hmm. is I don't like this one. Okay. I okay. think people use this as the be all end all diagnosis of Florida. Mm-hmm. And I think it's reductive. Okay, well, reduce me, babe. <laughs> the cops talk. Okay. The cops talk? <laughs> well, when you say it like that. The cops talk. Um, and what I mean by that is Florida has one of the loosest laws. <laughs> Sorry. The word loose, I don't know, it kind of got me. Um, (laughs) What the fuck are you talking about right now? The cops talk? What is that? What is the cops talk? (laughs) Okay. Um, Are you saying the police speak with one another? (laughs) No, no. I'm saying that... um, You're saying the cops talk. (laughs) And they're loose. (laughs) Okay, Okay. fuck. They got loose Um, cops. Yeah, I'm just saying that... um, There is, okay, Florida has a very permissive open records law that gives Mm. the media an inordinate access to detailed police files. Mm. That's where we get these lurid tales, right? Mm. That's why when you Google Ohio man or you Google like North Dakota man, Uh, you don't get the type of insanity that you get when you Google Florida man. No shit. And part of that is because um, it's called chapter 119. It's actually called the Sunshine Law. So Florida began its tradition of openness back in 1909 with the passage of chapter 119 of the Florida Statutes of the Public Records Law. This law provides that any records made or received by any public agency in the course of its official business um, are basically allowed to be open to the press. Whereas in other states, they are, um, you can't just get into all the police files. Like you can't, you're, um, they hide them. (laughs) (laughs) You're saying that citizens have uh, a certain degree of privacy that Mm -hmm. they don't have in Florida, in other states. And in Florida, uh, the records are open like uh, like my neighbors fly mm-hmm. uh, when I was eight years old <laughs> looking through the fence. And, oh. um, and I got to see everything that he had to give me. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I never forgot it. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. That's what the, the, the journalistic state of Florida is yeah, like. Is like- is like neighbor me Bill. being able to yeah, see through the fence at my neighbor Bill. And it see is. It's like a uh, veiny... Don't finish it. So yeah, it's like thanks to these like strong like public record laws. The sunshine laws. Bulging public record laws. So basically it's easy for journalists to get their hands on police incident reports and turn out these attention grabbing headlines, right? Um, And people use that to be like, so all the states have, have crime reports like this. But I just, I think that's too simplified. Florida has a loose regulatory system and... You know, yeah, I, loose. <laughs> I don't know 
why it keeps saying loose. Squirrel. Loose. Florida's loose. Florida. I guess Florida's loose. That makes yeah. sense, though. Florida is loose, people. Um, But that people, like, move there to buy homes that can't be seized in bankruptcy proceedings. Um, there's loose gun laws, like the stand your ground law is an example. Mm -hmm. Um, Ford, you know, of, of Ford. (laughs) Henry Ford? Yes. Noted that (laughs) the state has quote, no system to monitor the distribution of prescription drugs, which I think has changed a little bit, but basically not. Yeah. Um, there's no state income tax. So it's just like, it's plenty, you know, people come to Florida looking for a better life with better weather and they're not going to get either of those things. Mm -hmm. And it also attracts a contingent of people who come for more illicit or opportunistic reasons. It attracts a population of people who want to cheat the system. Yes. Yes. Who are the coolest kind of people. I also think Northerners just love to trash Florida because they can portray it as like a land full of well, it is these things though: drug dealers and mm-hmm. corrupt politicians and like deranged old people and road rage and like, I yeah, I mean, to get the attention off of them because their state sucks, you know, and it's boring, and there's nothing to do there, and it's it, you know, it's not the hot chick at the party. Okay, Florida is that messy bitch who's fucking hot but her top is slipping a little bit and she she's had a little bit too much already and she's getting up on a table and all the guys want to fuck her but then they're sort of thinking maybe not what are you talking about that's the hottest bitch at any (laughs) part like we love florida we love florida we do love that's right that's who and you know these people love to laugh at florida but they also love to give florida their money absolutely true all right so we've got some theses working, and um, we're going to piece Florida together bit by bit, insanity by insanity, until we've got a kind of comprehensive picture. Quilt. Boom. All right. Here are fun facts and findings. Mm-hmm. Kelsey Ann said on the document, it says fun facts <laughs> He's just findings. reading off the document. Yeah, I'm reading off the document. Bitch, right. give me your money. We're supposed so, to do only one per episode. Because uh, we we're lazy and we have this is a six Florida podcast. This episode. In oh, 1982, God. the Florida Keys declared themselves independent under the name the Conch Republic, which is what I call my uh, my taint. This lasted two minutes. <laughs> Just like me. Okay. I already said this. Florida is the flattest state in the USA as it is the state with the smallest difference between its highest and lowest points, which is only 345 feet. Florida is the only place where alligators and crocodiles coexist in the same habitat and have sloppy... No, they don't. They do. They fuck. They have mud, algae, sex, and they use algae as lube. Okay. That's true. That's a true fact. I read that on Wikipedia. So Florida is number one in shark attacks, sinkholes, lightning strikes, hurricanes, and it's top five on tornadoes. Top three on serial killers, top five on violent crime, and it is the number one place in the state where you can fuck an older hairy Cuban guy who will pay you to do it. And that's Florida Woman Podcast. <laughs> no, it's not. We have one more segment. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Um, in the yeah. domestic dispute between Florida man and Florida woman. Who won? Who won this week? The woman who glued her eyes shut with super glue um, instead of eye drops, or the man who threw a gator through the window of a drive-thru? I think the, the I think this week... Wait, wait, let's say one, two, three. Okay. On three, okay? All right, yeah. And just tell me what it is. Okay. One, one, two, two three. three. Florida, Florida man. Ah, oh, embarrassing. Okay, so I think that Florida man dug up a, a gator and threw it as a weapon. I think that's pretty or payment. It's unclear. Either way, you I think, think it's that's pretty, pretty Florida. Florida. Yeah, yeah. It is quintessential. Mm-hmm. The woman gluing her eyes shut. <laughs> I just think that's it's really like, good because there's an element of like reality. Like this uh, man is like he's crazy. He's doing crazy uh-huh. shit. His mom's like he loves pranks. Like. 
I think that this Florida woman is so emblematic of Florida because she did something wacky with the help of two other people. Like, who is this person that dug through her purse and handed her the crazy glue, too? <laughs> like, true. who's okay. that person? Yeah, there's several Florida women in this, in this in story. This story. Yeah. And now she has to be blind permanently because she doesn't have health care or a job. <laughs> <laughs> like if we're really bringing it home oh shit you're right you know I think I was going for a hack Florida man <laughs> but well, this is a real Florida real. woman well no yeah. he's real but like that was like sort of the obvious answer but like yeah you broke it down for me okay on the inaugural Florida woman podcast Florida woman wins <laughs> this domestic dispute <laughs> that's <laughs> the best that's how you're gonna celebrate yeah Give her a little more. Come on. She's blind. <laughs> Woo! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was perfect. I just flashed in my titties. She did. Finally. Full oh, circle. Thank goodness. Okay. I think that's the perfect way to end this this very first podcast. Yep. There'll be more. Bye. It's a sinking ship. Let's just fucking party on it.